outdoor activities always bring on more possible ways to get aches and pains. And let's take a look at what you may be facing and how to deal with what hurts. Well, during the summer months, of course, it stays lighter longer, and that encourages us to play outdoors, whether it's going out for a jog, a hike, or maybe joining a softball or baseball league. Dr. Cecil Graham from AZ Pain Centers is here to address some of the pain issues you might experience after you've gotten outside for some of your warm weather activities and the price you pay for pushing it too hard. Dr. Graham, thank you so much. And I am 100% one of those people. Like, I played volleyball in college. I feel like I can just go out and play like I did when I was 20 years old. <laughs> and then I wake up the next morning, and I'm like, I can't even move. What happened? I'm right there with you. Yeah, we all do it. We, we all do it. <laughs> and, and the thing you've heard over and over again is stretch. Uh -huh. You know, and that's what we don't do. So simple. You know, so simple. But, but yet we don't do it. Right. And the, and the biggest thing we do, like when we deal with patients that come in that have chronic issues, is we want to get them moving. Mm -hmm. You know, I want, to, I want to suppress their pain so they can get moving again and get on with their quality of life and get out there and do those things. But if you're someone that's been sitting around for a long time, you know, we don't do it as much in Arizona because we, we have a year-round kind of climate. But you still, when you go do it, you want to warm up. You want to stretch the muscles that you're getting ready to use. And then when you finish, you want to do it again. Mm -hmm. You have to do that. So what are some of the areas, if people have been sort of inactive and then they're joining like a softball or a baseball league, what are some of the areas where you see the, the pain injuries or the... Well, most commonly, it's, it's low back. Uh, okay. By far and above, that's it to be doing no matter what sports we're playing. How do you stretch your lower back? Well, forward and, and back, you do both because you have, as you go up the spine, you have, and you see here on the screen that we have, it's, this is one of the best si slides, it's so simple, but there's so many different components and it goes through them all. Um, like a bulging disc, if you, if you think <gasps> about the, the, the disc, everybody hears about discs and they use the term and people miscommunicate, they'll say, herniated disc or a ruptured disc versus a bulging disc. Your discs are 75% water content. They're very fluid. Mm -hmm. So if you bend at the waist and pick up just 20 pounds off of the ground, you're putting 300 pounds per square inch of pressure on the front of that disc. And if you see that one there that says bulging disc, so when you put bend forward, you put that 300 pounds of pressure and that disc is very fluctuant, what's it going to do? It's going to push out the back and that's what it does. That kind of thing, when we see that, those are the patients when we deal with acute problems, that's the population I really want to get because that population, we can get them back and, and heal the problem. You can. Turn it in and, and prevent it from becoming a chronic issue and pull that back. We go in and we'll do some things to suppress the pain where that disc is touching and irritating the nerve root causes an inflammatory response. So we go right to that site suppress the inflammation with a little local anesthetic and some anti-inflammatory and then we get you moving mm -hmm. and and when you do the range of motion stretching exercises what it does is it promotes the body to reabsorb that that disc and in that same mechanism while we're talking about it if you bend if you squat with your legs and you keep your waist still not not moving and pick up 20 pounds off the ground. You only put 17 pounds of pressure on that disc. So 17 wow. versus 300 pounds of pressure, just that one little mechanical thing. Because we all, ladies, are bad for going over in the back of your car and picking out groceries mm -hmm. or doing that. Use, keep your waist still and use your legs. Okay. Uh, just, but that's a pearl, it's such a pearl. But as far as re-injury, and I get patients all the time that'll say, oh, I've had back problems for years. Most of those patients have tweaked it and they've had a bulge and they've had irritation for a few weeks and then it got better, fine, and then they tweak it again, but just improper mechanics. Mm -hmm. That's what it's all about. And then what, once it goes to a herniated disc, is there a lot you can do or is it harder to well, fix it? it, it there is a, a herniated is when the center, if you look down on top of the disc, there's the outer rings called the annulus and the center is the nucleus. So a herniated or ruptured disc, those are pre the same term, is where that nucleus r busts through the outer ring and it extrudes out. That is the one as you see on that diagram. Now that will not reabsorb. 
Oh. The center okay. won't come back in. It's the bulge where the outer ring stays intact that'll heal itself over mm. time. But that, if it herniates ruptures, then it gets down to if you have motor function deficit. And that's the kind of the threshold of, okay, does this patient need surgery to go in and take that disc physically away from the nerve root? Um, most of the time, if we get a patient that has a lot of pain related to that type of issue, and we see it, and we do MRIs if we need to to work it up, uh, but we'll go in and uh, suppress it with some anti-inflammatory at that site. So we decrease the pain, mm -hmm. and then it gives time to let the body settle down. And a lot of times, if they don't have motor function deficit, the pain will go away, and, and it won't cause a problem. It certainly seems like the moment you have pain or any kind of injury, come and see you. Because you can do something about it if you right. catch it sort of early. We love it at preventing it from crossing over into the chronic issue. Right. And chronic's a whole different can of worms. Right. You know. And we don't want to go there. You no. don't want to go there. <laughs> Dr. Graham, thank you so much for coming in and talking to us and reminding us to take care of ourselves. Thank you. Arizona Pain Center is located on Orange Grove Road on the northwest side of town. To make your appointment, just call 742-PAIN. Again, 742-7246 or go online to learn more at azpaincenters.com. And we will be right back.